Hello and welcome to another thrilling Python tutorial from my bring back. My name is Ed and you've joined us for the third part of a three part series here where we're building a command line utility in Python that will take input and give us Google map directions in a text file. So where we left off last episode, we were having success pulling down the HTML directions from the Google server and then we were able to get them stripped of their HTML tags. We also spent some time talking about code attribution and security. We've got two tasks less to accomplish. One, we need to make it take input so we can get directions from any one place to any other. And two, we need to make it spit it out to a text file so it's nice, portable, and readable. Let's take a crack at it. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is get this script accepting input. If you recall from previous episodes, it was just going from Texarkana to Atlanta with directions. Let's get our input from the command line. And if you watch the previous videos, I'm sure you'll recall we can do that using that sys module. There is a portion there called argv that we can make use of. So from sys import argv. And RV is just a list of the things, the arguments we tack on to a Python script at the command line. The first object in that list, the other, the thing at index zero is always going to be the script name, so you can skip that one. And we'll say that our first thing we need is argv1. That's going to be our point of origin. And argv2 will be our destination. Let's sneak a v in there. And finish the brackets we started. And gosh. That just uh, might work. Let's take a look. All right, and up here I'm gonna call python.exe on that script, and I've typed two things afterwards. I've got Cleveland should be our point of origin. Pittsburgh should be our destination. And here we go. We ran it and right out to the prompt. Here came our instructions. Now I don't know the layout of either of those towns. I'm gonna assume they make sense. And you might say, well, there's probably multiple Clevelands in the U.S. or in the world, or the same thing goes for Pittsburghs. And I'd say you're probably right, and that's us relying on Google to do the abstracting and the guessing there. They've gotten pretty good at it over time, and we can sort of rely on that. But if you want to be more specific, you can. The way to make sure that you make all of one of these command line arguments come into Python as an origin point with spaces in it uh, would be something like this but you put quotation marks, double quotation marks around it. And let's see, is there a Pittsburgh somewhere else in the world? Let's check. Quick Google search indicates not many of them spelled with an H on the end. So let's do something like this. Let's find a little town in Arkansas by the name of Pittsburgh sans the H. Should take all those at once. And as we run it, look at that. Got a different set of directions here, and it would appear that Google's doing a good job interpreting those things. Just wanted to show you how to use the double quotes on this command line arguments if you want to give more than one word as your origin or destination. That way you could do something like type a whole address in there. Makes sense, right? And unfortunately, things aren't going to work real well if you give it absolutely nonsense input. So let's go from Cleveland, Ohio to my bring back and see what we get here. And you'll notice it throws an error at us, so geo unknown address. That means that that Google Maps portion of code we have that's touching the API was unable to find anything and came back empty handed. Now, if we were going to really develop this thing thoroughly, we'd add in error handling. We'd do something like, hey, if it throws this kind of error, come back to the user and say, I didn't understand this part of your input. Could you please modify it or clarify it for me? We'll get to that kind of stuff in later videos. I just wanted to show you out front in case you plan on making any sort of use of this thing, that that is going to be a big pitfall and it's not really ready for the real world until we add that and some more. So, it's sort of a JSYK. All right, the last thing that we need to do is to put ourselves in a position such that we can save this to a text file so we could print it or look at it on another device, that kind of thing. Not so it's just unsaved input output rather there on the command interface. So in order to do that, we're going to use our knowledge about writing things from Python to a file. You'll recall that stuff from previous videos. Here's how we're going to implement it. All right, so down here we have it already going through the steps and the directions. We can go ahead and put that within a while loop where we open up a file. I'm just going to throw it on my desktop and call it directions.txt. And let's fix our indentation here. And instead of printing to that file, or rather just printing to the console, let's save to that file. 
And if you recall how to do that, we're going to use the write command. And we're going to go ahead and use, like I said, that write command on that open file f. And we're going to tack on to each step uh, the necessary special characters for a new line in the Windows text file. So let's save this thing. And now when we run it, it should look a little different. So let's not go to my bring back. Let's go to, to Pittsburgh, Arkansas again. And no return at the console. Didn't get any information there. That's because we took out the print commands. It should be sitting on my desktop. Let's take a brief look. Oh, I've got all kinds of things up here. What do we have? Ah, directions.txt. And here we are. Well, shucks, I had fun doing that. We made a little command line utility, implemented the knowledge that we built with previous videos, and introduced some new topics that we're going to need to visit. So we've te teased them already. We'll get to them in order here. I'm going to give you a little bit about Python dictionaries coming up. We're going to jump down the terrifying rabbit hole of object-oriented stuff and take a look at classes in Python. And we'll give you some error handling as well. So again, this is Ed for my bring back. Keep coming back. We're going to continue to attempt to produce content that you folks enjoy and learn from. And we'll see you next time.